two, one. Hello, everyone. The release date for Venture Kid is January 14th. It occurs to me that I do not have enough time left to record a video for every song in the game, as I had previously mentioned I would. So, what to do? Um, my plan, I'm just going to do the rest of the songs that I think need to be talked about, and uh, I guess after that, uh, we'll see where we go from there, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. Um, it's more of the same, I guess. Uh, there's only a few. There's only a few tracks left that I would want to, like they're they're on my list for songs I'd like to talk about. Um, among them is Level Seven. Skipping ahead a bit, this is Level Seven, the factory level. And that's a loop. Um, it fades out. This is not a Nintendo fade out. Um, this is just um, this is just a, a generic fade out for listening to. That's what these uh, these WO ones are just fade the whole thing down at this value, uh, fade the whole uh, application down at that value. Um, so that's not that, that's not eight bit, obviously. So uh, the the reason why I wanted to talk about this song um, is because there's a cool thing. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm still having to do this. Uh, okay. I got it in my head that every level in this game should have, uh, its own character. And that character, uh, is mostly based on the setting of the game. And this is something that Nintendo, Nintendo games do all the time. So you, you'll be playing like Double Dragon 3, for example. Um, level 1 is just a street level, like a, you know, a New York level street or something. So you're fighting in the street, they play some, you know, rock or something. It's kind of a rock track, um, you know, and then they eventually go to uh, Japan and then they play this really stereotypical, just ninja style song. And basically what Nintendo was doing um, was they would, they had kind of these, these little tropes that they would come up with, um, like little, little things that, you know, if there's an ice level, usually there's a certain sound. Or if there's a, a level where rain is in the background, there's usually a certain sound. Um, and that's stuff I could talk about for days. Um, levels that have, you know, Cascading Water, Bubble Man, and Ninja Gaiden 2. Um, they both share this sort of cascading rhythm of notes that, that sort of reflects the, the water cascading down the screen. So I got it in my head. That uh, most levels, okay, for another example, a fire level usually has like some sort of bongo sounds or almost like a tribal uh, uh, bongo-y, uh, you know, hand drums, uh, you know, sort of around a fire. You just sort of hear this sort of fire technique. Um, you know, city levels usually do rock and they do power chords or they're up, upbeat, heavy, like heavy tempoed uh, or fast tempo. And, you know, four songs, they're usually pretty happy. Um if you think like Kirby or something like sort of bright forest levels. But anyways, there, there's lots of tropes and ice levels have like sort of crystal-y sounds and uh, and things like that. OK, where am I going with this? Um, what does a factory level have? That's what I wanted to do for this level. Like what would the trope be for a factory level? So uh, I was listening to a bunch of sound effects on the NES and um, found this one here. That perfectly 
sounded like an alarm going off uh, in, in more of a bad guy base or something like a base rather than a factory. But I, I kind of also imagined um, kind of like uh, the factory in Elysium, the movie Elysium, which wasn't that great or anything. But the factory, like everything up till that factory scene and the factory scene was pretty good, I thought, uh, especially visually. And that factory was kind of like this factory you don't want to work at and like alarms will go off if you're about to spoilers um, die. <laughs> so hopefully that didn't spoil anything for anyone. So um, here's what a factory alarm kind of sounds like in an 8-bit form. Well, if I pick the right one, it does. Blah, blah, blah. What do we got here? 58... What is 58? It's full of 256. Well, anyways, here's the alarm. And I don't know why I don't have the right sample here. 256. Here we go. So let's just look at that. Of course. This time I remembered. You can't see what I'm pointing at. So let's just. So it's just a Nintendo sound, basically. Nothing, nothing really that I needed to point out. But this is just a square wave that kind of resembles a square wave or a alarm going off. Okay. So man, I'm spending so much time talking about that. Like I'm, I'm real proud of this alarm sound. Uh, but you know, the alarm sound. Like, this comes from Super Contra. This is a sound uh, from Super Contra. And um, I wanted to take the sound and make it a melodic note so that it would sort of, uh, it would fit in the key of my song. So that in the background of the song, you, you hear this alarm going off, but it's actually a note in the song. So that's what I did here with this factory sound leading into the song. And then it's really just a kind of a heavy track after that, uh, utilizing some pretty beefy power chords. Um, in fact, I would like to, uh, I, I, this is something anyone who's making NES music could um, use, because it's, it's kind of like when you're trying to come up with a power chord combination, um, you usually just fiddle around with every combination until you get one that sounds the best. So... I really like the way these these ones sound together. If I were ever to make another Nintendo track that needed power chords, this would be the uh, the way I'd be going for it. So what am I doing here? It's a 13 and a 22. So 13 is starts with a 25% duty cycle, then goes to a 12% duty cycle, and then repeats. So that sounds like... All right, nothing crazy there. But... You mix it with 22 here, which is 50% duty cycle at the start. Then it goes to a 25. So the very first initial pluck um, for each of these power chords is a mix between this 50% and uh, the other ones 25%. So they combine. And then the actual sustain part that you hear... That's a mix of 12% and 25%, if I got that right. Yeah. So I just, I like the way that uh, that comes together. That sounds, that sounds plenty heavy. And then obviously you mix it in with the, uh, you mix that in with your triangle, you get all that meat. And then what I liked to do was also add echoes to the, the guitars. Echoes with my 56, 48, 16 sort of protocol. So all the echoes, so I'm basically just echoing the note again, but sometimes, whoopsie doodle, sometimes you just want that echo to have the initial attack again. So what I mean by initial attack is even though it's at uh, 16 volume now, um, I still want this initial sound, like I want to go back to get that original 50% duty cycle pluck, but also the keen observer here will notice that I broke a Nintendo limitation there but I'm not gonna say how 
at all. Okay, so here's what it sounds like. I, I just like the way these squares sound. So remember, we got the uh, the two different kinds of square waves with a different duty cycle at the start. Plus, we got my 56, 48 initial volume pluck. And we've got echoes, and that's what this sounds like. So there's no detuning uh, on this one. Get this thing really high up. There's no detuning. Um, so it's it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty clean. It just comes out clean. So the other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to simulate a lead that sounded like that original alarm sound. So um, that's what this is here. The 14 that you see here. Um, that's kind of me trying to simulate uh, what the alarm sounded like. So it sounds bad if you slow it down, obviously, but let's just hear it on its own. So it just kind of keeps that running motif of like, this factory is a melodic factory playing music at you. Um, those are the kind of just the concepts you have to come up with when you're, you know, I wanted to treat Venture Kid as if it was an actual NES soundtrack and and I was the one in charge of making the music for the game. So when they would come to you or me and say, like, we need a factory level, I have to come up with some sort of gamey way to make a factory song. Just the little bits that you got to you got to try to emphasize to keep uh, to keep things sounding fresh. See a lot of uh, this is almost a Castlevania style thing. The echoes that you hear here. When you get these high, when you get these duty cycle mixing square waves, so 14 again is 25% um, start, then 12% sustained. When you get those kind of plucked duty cycle sounds, uh, if you do high higher notes and then add the echoes, so here's the G sharp 5 echoed again, A sharp 5 echoed again, B echoed again, that's kind of right away a very Konami sound. It's just something that, like Castlevania 3, I don't know, reminds me of Castlevania 3, like the clock tower or something. I don't even know exactly where, but that just, that sounds very Konami to me. Ooh, this, this breakdown was so damn heavy. From, and I'm not, this is me as like a Nintendo connoisseur, not me as like, hey, you listen to me, this is heavy. Just as a Nintendo connoisseur, I'm very happy with with the way that this sort of panned out for this track. Yeah. So yeah, other than that, it's a really straightforward track. Um, a lot of the stuff for this game, it's maybe not as flamboyant as Anomaly was or or even Melodia. Um, these are these are really more tracks that I didn't want to I didn't want to uh, interrupt the user. Or sorry, I want to say user all the time because my day job I need to use the word user. Um, player, listener. Uh, I wanted I didn't want to take away from the game experience. I wanted to try and add to it. So that's where I want the I want this factory to be the thing that sort of stands out. Not necessarily like here's a crazy track. Um, however. Later on in the game, like there's two levels after this one, and those are two I'm going to do videos for as well. Um, later stage songs in video games usually pick up the pace. They usually get a little more intense, a little more threatening to the the player. And so I do pick up the pace in those ones as a motif. So I, I do get a little crazy, and that's kind of why I want to show those videos. But still here, level seven, we're not really all the way deep into the the game yet even though it's pretty pretty deep but i wanted the the factory sound to sort of stand out as uh kind of the uh the thing here so other than that uh nice short video here i'm just gonna go into some of the deleted scenes because i think i do some uh melodic stuff with that siren sound again like i tried to actually play a melody with the original siren sound but i don't know how well that turns out and let's just raise this again 
Raising it. Woo! Okay, what do we got here? Detuning. Yeah, I remember that. I couldn't fit it in. It's a whole section that like I'm perfectly happy with just didn't fit. It's kind of just testing some stuff out here. Little echoes. finish that one. Little poor man's echo. There you go. I mean, it's really quick, but here's me taking that uh, siren sound and making a little riff with it. Cool. Then it just falls apart, goes somewhere incorrect. Little construction pattern here. Um, this obviously the leads are garbage here, but here's something that I'd like to point out that I'm doing with the uh, kick the kick channel here. I want you to look uh, just at the volume differences here. This was another protocol I would come up with where um, the first one is there's no volume, there's no value here, but that actually means 64. When there's no value there, it, it defaults to full volume. So 64, 48, 56, that's kind of me saying start loud, go a little quieter, then the next note is not all the way loud again, but it's a little louder. So it's, you go kind of do, 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 do. So here, then here, then in the middle, then here, then here, then in the middle. And that's kind of a, a way to symbolize sort of right left kick drum uh variations which sounds kind of like this so as we've done many times before in this series let's hear what it sounds like when we f it up mm -hmm. no variation and also i'm gonna not do the round robin as well so we get as ridiculous as we can get and it's just the kick and snare so the first half the first half uses the varied method and then the second half uses the non-varied method so it's just bleh, it's every note is exactly the same let's hear if we can hear a difference This might be hard to hear if you don't have headphones on. So um, maybe turn it up a bit. Just I'm going to do just the kick so you can hear that this first part, it's going and then the next one is just so see if we can hear a difference just here. Obviously, I muted the snare because the snare will be louder, but it's... Anyways, turn your headphones or your volume back to normal. We're going back to full, full intensity here and begin. That's uh, that's full circle. Anything? And those should sound familiar. Okay, that.
that's basically the factory level um, and everything I wanted to talk about on that one. So remember, uh, I brought up the motif was a factory. Um, I brought up some of the heaviness, how to how to get a heavy sound, the, the ways I mix these square waves um, and syncopated kick drums. So that's everything that we covered on this video. And uh, that's a short video. I'm liking it. Um, I'm going to just keep this on rolling. I'm going to move on to the next one in a separate video. But uh, that's it for me. Thanks for checking this one out, everyone. And we'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for watching this video. We'll see you guys next time. Feel free to subscribe to this channel.